Good evening and welcome into episode 12 of the Rich Petrosky Show. We are live from St. Joseph High School. Happy to be joined, as always, by the Chargers head coach, Rich Petrosky. I'm Connor Klingon, and thank you for joining us here on Arena Sportsnet Chicago. As always, we'd like to remind you tonight's show and all St. Joseph Chargers programming is presented by Meatheads in Elmhurst, a place you can enjoy with your whole family from the moment you walk in the door until the moment you leave. Meatheads at 143 North York Street in Elmhurst. Coach, the postseason's upon us. How does it feel to have a spot in the prep pool? Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's great. It feels really good, um, especially with these seniors. You know what I mean? The record doesn't show exactly where we wanted to be, but um, getting in this, getting in the dance, that's all that really matters. It's like we're in the NIT right now. So, you know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's a big-time challenge for these seniors. Um, we get redemption, and I think that's the biggest thing that we could do is get redemption against a team that we should have beat. So. Yeah, definite chance for that against Leo. There was a little bit of an issue with finding a place to play, but it was announced Monday you'll be playing tomorrow night at St. Rita. How did that all come together? Um, well, when uh, we had our post-season uh, uh, meeting, the coaches meeting, and um, Leo came up to me, and they're, they're like, um, well, right now we can't get our home field, which is the Croc Center, um, so we're going to have to find an alternate spot to play. And I'm like, okay. Just let me know, and um, I'm like, if if worse comes to worse, come over to Elmhurst. You know what I mean? You guys still could be the home team. We'll be the visiting team. Um, they didn't like that too much because they know it's more of a home game for us and everything like that. So um, they said they found St. Rita Monday morning, and Rita's been letting everybody play there because um, De La Salle played four home games there. Uh, Leo actually played a home game there this year, so St. Rita's field's getting used a lot, so I don't know what they're paying over there, but you know, it is what it is. So we got a game. Yeah, is that kind of a common thing in the CCL to have two schools kind of just help each other out to get those games? Yeah, in? you know what I mean? Everybody tries to help everybody. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know what I mean? We've been getting a lot of bad press because of the whole Hope thing and where teams forfeited because they didn't want to go to Hope and things like that. But they don't understand the big picture here that we're doing this because, you know, it, it's at the end of the day, it's all about the kids. And, and that's what we're all all about you know what i mean so um you know i mean that's a great thing with that is that we're just trying to get the kids to play that's all we're trying to do yeah that's always the best thing to get them out on the field uh you told me a couple weeks ago that you thought leo would be the opponent but what was your reaction when it was officially announced oh i was was ecstatic i was ecstatic and so were the, the players because now they know that we get redemption for and we get to do what we did we couldn't do two weeks ago so it's it's one of those things and it's going to be exciting for us to play and things like that, and I, we can't wait to get out there. So, And uh, the Prep Bowl this season opened up to teams from outside of the city of Chicago. Uh, for you, is that really one of the biggest advantages to being a part of the Chicago Catholic League is getting a chance to play in that? Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it gives us a week 10. Uh, most teams, uh, we were telling the kids all week, at this point a lot of these teams are already handing their equipment in. They're done. You know what I mean? They don't have an option to go play some uh, in a tournament at the end of the day. And, and, you know what I mean? That's our biggest thing, and that's what we wanted to do. And we're here, and let, let, let's, let's play ball already. You know what I mean? And basically that's what we're all about right now. Absolutely. And, Coach, uh, I saw on Twitter this week, Shamar McDade Bishop was named All-CCL for a third year. How proud of you were you of, for him for getting that accomplishment? Oh, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, we, uh, we had six all-conference players this year. Um, and actually, not only was Shamar all-conference, but he's actually the player of the year in our conference. Um, he's a lawless award winner. So um, that's a feat that uh, uh, only one person in the in the whole conference gets to get. And um, he got it, and, you know what I mean, I was ecstatic for him to get it. Um, but it just shows his heart, dedication, and what he's he's brought to the program in, in four years here and being all-conference three years. That's a feat in itself, being a, a, a CCL all-conference player three years in a row. that that does Not a lot of people can come up and say that, especially if you played four years of varsity football, especially in the CCL. So it, it's been exciting watching him and things like that. And he's just going to take it up to the next level, and he's just going to be great at the next level also. Yeah, I certainly saw it all season. Defensively, it seemed like he was living in the other team's backfield, exactly. as I like to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, The Rich Petrosky Show is brought to you by Cleaver Supplements. Visit them online at cleaversupplements.com. 
Clearer supplements, pure supplements for when genetics are not enough. Coach, uh, before we get back to the prep bowl game, I thought we'd do a recap of the regular season, uh, go through some of the best moments that I can remember. Uh, as you said a little bit earlier, not the record you guys wanted at 3-6, and six, but still plenty of great plays throughout the year uh, for this young team that is only going to get better over oh, the yeah. next few years. <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, that's the biggest thing, and we're excited about what the underclassmen are going to bring. Um, I told them today right after practice, I go, seniors, we're relying on you to get past this right now. But at the end of the day, uh, the, this underclassman is going to follow whatever you do. And, and, and I think they understand that now, and I, I think they're ready for it. Well, now we'll go through some of those highlights that I mentioned. All the way back to the first game of the season against Elmwood Park, Amir Burgi returns a punt for the first Charger touchdown of the season. How surprised were you that your first touchdown of the year came on special teams? Actually, not not very surprised because we practice special. Like I said, we practice special teams all the time. So I wasn't too, ex- uh, you know, what I mean, I wasn't too surprised by it. It it, it was a surprise by the person that did it. That I think <laughs> that's what it was. It wasn't surprised that we actually did it. It was a person that did it. So well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, you see Zach Ford back deep to return the punt, and then all of a sudden Amir's the one taking us to the house. Exactly. <laughs> that, you know what I mean? And and you know what I mean? And that's how we've been all year. It's uh, we've. We played it where, you know what I mean, the best person gets back there to do what we have to do, and that's what's happened. So I am, I'm really excited, and, and these kids did. They, they, uh, the record doesn't show what our heart and determination did for this season. So, Well, one game that really did show that heart and determination was your second game of the year, going up to South Beloit, up near the border, Wisconsin. A dominant performance from start to finish, 69 to nothing. You got the Gatorade bath after this game, Coach. Uh, what was it like to watch a complete performance like that from your team? Uh, it was it was great, um, and it uh, we get to the point where it was great because Shamar didn't even play in the game because uh, he got ejected in the Elmwood Park game, so he didn't even play in the in the in our blowout game, sixty nine nothing. But that just shows you that everybody else just stepped up and did what we had to do and. You know what I mean? We put it all together. At the end of the day, that's what we really did. We put it all together, and it was it was great for – and uh, actually in that game, that was the most points scored by any St. Joe's team in the history of the St. Joe's uh, football team. So, again, you know what I mean? The, you know what I mean? With, with everything, the adversity and everything we went through all year, we're still breaking records that – and I don't think they really understand it, and, and I think that's great about it. Absolutely, and uh, in that game, Zach Ford had probably one of my favorite plays of the season where he takes a screen pass, stiff arms the guy, and then just streaks down the sideline for a touchdown. I remember talking to you about that play. You predicted it was going to be a touchdown before it even happened. Yeah, yeah. uh, Well, again, you know what I mean? My coach is up in the press box. They're like, you know, if Zach gets to the outside, he's gone, right? And I'm like, yeah, I know. So, (laughs) you know what I mean? We just throw it to him, and he catches it, and he does the rest, and You know what I mean? But that's what Zach, that's Zach. You know what I mean? That's Zach. There's not much more you can say about that, but that's Zach. Yeah, he showed it all season on both sides of the ball and punting as well and on the kickoffs. Uh, A really talented player, uh, a lot of heart and determination from him. Uh, Caleb Hayden also had one of his best games against South Beloit uh, with a number of long throws in that game. How exciting is it to have him back for another year next season? It's actually really exciting. Um, It it's it's a it's a pleasure to have three quarterbacks um where if you talk to a lot of teams nowadays they have their one go-to guy you know what i mean and they have their guy that they're going to play and things like that but at any given time the great thing about it is is that any one of my quarterbacks can step into a varsity game and play our game so it it, it says a lot about our coaching my quarterback coach rich uh sybil what he's done and things like that with our quarterbacks. They're, you know what I mean? You're not going to find three quality quarterbacks. And the thing about it is is that we they're, they're all a year apart. So it works out perfectly for us. Absolutely. And uh, we saw what Ezekiel was able to do and what D'Amico was able to do this season, both really impressive players as well. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And it, and it, it kind of to the point where it's like I kind of have when Caleb graduates, I'm into that. Uh, where do I go now? You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean? D'Amico is a great emergency guy. You know what I mean? 
Uh, he actually finished the offensive practice today. Um, and he, uh, if you ask my coach who has the best ball out of three, he's going to sell. You, he's going to tell you D'Amico because D'Amico has just a great, great ball. And you know, what I mean, no, no knock to Ezekiel or Caleb. It's just that they they can throw the ball seventy five yards on a fly where uh, D'Amico needs short, quick routes, and he it's on the money every time. He uh, it, it's kind of funny, but if we have to compare him to somebody, he's not as good, but his pinpoint accuracy is just like a Drew Clipper. It really is. He's a lefty, throws it right there on the on the button. Um, not 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 technique wise or anything like that, but he does put it just like Clipper did against uh, that Aurora quarterback did. It, it's amazing to watch. So. Yeah, Clippert was the quarterback for Aurora Christian last week. Certainly did look impressive throwing the football. Tonight's episode of the Rich Petrosky Show is brought to you by Meatheads, the official sponsor of St. Joseph Chargers football programming. We provide a full-service, made-to-order dining experience serving high-quality, fresh, never-frozen ingredients, including 100% Angus beef hamburgers, hand-breaded chicken tenders, and chicken sandwiches, as well as real Idaho potatoes, freshly cut every day. Meatheads at 143 North York Street. Coach, you said a little bit earlier was scoring the 69 points. This team broke records, and one of those was winning two consecutive homecoming games for the first time in program history with the win against Catalyst Maria. How big of a moment was that for the program? Oh, that was huge. Um, but, you know what I mean, that goes back to any game um, on homecoming. That's that's the game everybody wants to win next to senior night, and that's exactly what we did. And it was great for the kids because they got out and they did what they're supposed to do. We got a double, double level win on that too. So it was it was great there for that too. Um, I was really excited. And coach, you gave a lot of credit to your defensive coordinator Taywan Brown all season. And against Catalyst Maria, his unit came up with two defensive touchdowns and a shutout, which made it eight straight quarters of shutout football at that point. How confident was the defense following those two performances? Oh, uh, you know what. Coach Brown puts them in a position every week to be to be dominant. Um, uh, we ended up being the best defense in the conference, um, even though Hope only got one nothing wins. We were we still would have ended up being the best defensive team in the conference, and it, that just says a lot about what he's doing with the defense and how our defense progresses and things like that. So. Well, Coach, following that two-game win streak, two tough losses in a row, games that you said, and I noticed as well, closer than the score against Chicago Hope and St. Ignatius, and both of those teams end up going to the playoffs. You have to think that your young players getting a chance to play in games like that, that's only going to help them moving forward. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, The great thing about being in the CCL, we have a playoff game every week. Um, there's, there's no, there's no one denying it that when we're out there playing, um, and especially who we're playing, we're out there playing a playoff game every week, because if you think about it, everybody on our, on our schedule with the exception of three teams. So we played six conference games, three of them made the playoffs, three of them didn't. And technically four of them because Leo, cause we're playing Leo in the prep bowl. So four of them made the playoffs and two of them didn't. So that just says a lot about what the conference is, and 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 you know what I mean. Uh, we have twelve team, or we had uh, uh, eight teams go to the playoffs this year. You know what I mean. Last year we had ten teams go to the playoffs. You know what I mean. So we're just getting better and better and better. So yeah, and one of those teams that didn't make the playoffs was Brother Rice. So yeah. that's a really tough opponent as well. So exactly uh, as that's, you said, every week it's a chance to play a great team. Yeah, you know what I mean, and and. I think that's the biggest thing about it is is that we get to play the best talent in Chicago, and, and you you can't get any better than what we're playing. Um, you know what I mean? We, we, we can very easily match up with a lot of smaller teams if we wanted to, but my thing is is that, you know what I mean, a lot of teams gripe about playing those six, seven, eight, eight schools and things like that. You know what I mean? Going into Brother Rice, we knew what was going to happen, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It, the score was fifty nine nothing, but if you get if you get apples and oranges, we're apples and oranges really. So, you know, what I mean, I just like to play the competition that's the best around. So, and getting a chance to do that in the Chicago Catholic League and Charger fans, don't forget to stop by Meatheads at one forty three North York Street in Elmhurst and enjoy our fast casual family restaurant. 
that serves fresh experiences. The Rich Petrosky Show is also brought to you by Cleaver Supplements. Visit them online at cleaversupplements.com. Cleaver Supplements, pure supplements for when genetics are not enough. Coach, following those two losses, you guys win a conference game on the road at DePaul Prep, and freshman quarterback Ezekiel Boos, who we talked about earlier, he played a big role in that win. How valuable was all the experience he got this season? <laughs> uh, it, it was amazing. Um, and it, it's funny because you've seen a completely different Ezekiel every week, and it's kind of funny because we're, we asked and we're just like, he's just like, I feel more better. I feel much comfortable coming off the bench than I do starting. And I'm like, all right, that, that, thanks for telling me that because now I know what kind of role I can have you in now and I, I know what I can do with you now. So that, that, that's huge for us because now I know that. And it's kind of funny because the other day me and the coaches were talking. We're like, Ezekiel's our long reliever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to throw Caleb in there to start the game, but you know what I mean? We might have to go to the right-hander early in, in case, you know what I mean, get into the baseball references here, but you never know. So, Hey, Joe Montana had that role at Notre Dame, just yeah. <laughs> going, uh, going way back there, but <laughs> uh, he didn't start back in college, so that, that can be a valuable role coming off the bench uh, as a quarterback. Uh, but, Coach, uh, not even just Ezekiel, you mentioned week after week how excited you are about this freshman class. How would you evaluate evaluate their performance, not just on the varsity level, but also JV this season? Well, um, with them, again, now we are back-to-back-to-back JV conference champs in the Red Division. Uh, That's a feat that's never happened here before again. Um, And, you know what I mean, that just says how deep we really are because if you weren't at the games, you wouldn't know, but we've only dressed – between 12 and 16 kids on the JV team. And they're going out and against a good Aurora team that just came off. Uh, they they lost uh, um, St. Lawrence, but the week before, they beat Ignatius. They beat Ignatius 50 like to nothing, the JV team. And then our JV team comes in there and <laughs> drops 50 on them. And, and it just tells you that it's like – and. The funny thing about it is, is that we only have 13 kids dressed for that JV game, and we dropped 50 points on them. It's just, it's just amazing what the, this team can do, and they don't even know how good they are. That I think that's the biggest thing about them. Well, I was watching that game on the roof of yeah. the press box of Aurora <laughs> Christian. I was talking to somebody from Aurora Christian. They they just kept asking, "Who is that number five? That's Tim Shannon. He was just going off in <laughs> yeah. that JV game. Yeah, it's he's a uh, he's a special player. Uh, uh, I say it all the time. He's a special player. We kind of stole him from a couple other Catholic schools, but you know what I mean. Uh, at the end of the day, he like I like I've been saying since the beginning. He wanted to stay with his friends, which is Ezekiel and Angel. And you know what I mean. Grabbing Ezekiel was probably the best thing we did. Uh, probably he's probably my best recruit so far, and I've only had one year of recruiting. So if if I can keep pulling into Ezekiel's and uh, and the Tim Shannons and the Angels. Man, it, it's it's going to be a sight to see here because we're going to be able to beat up on people. So, absolutely, and and that JV team, they really did beat up on Aurora Christian. Yeah, uh, but coach, uh, unfortunately for you guys, following that two game win streak, or sorry, rather, uh, last three games of the year, you guys ended up falling. Uh, but a chance to turn things around, really, now in the prep bowl and getting another shot at Leo. Yeah, I. Uh, I just, you know, what I mean, and uh, it, it's it's something that's very, very big for us because it's the first time in school history we have ever made the purple. Um, so, you know, what I mean, it's another one of those things where it's it's another first for us, and uh, and you know, what I mean, I I can't fathom what what can turn out for this if we do get that far and that deep into the prep bowl because if you think about it. You know what I mean? Granted, we might have to face a Mount Carmel or a Providence or something like that. And you know what I mean? We might get blown out by them. But at the end of the day, what better competition do you want? You know what I mean? Um, me personally, I don't think either one of them are going to get knocked out in the first two rounds. So if that's the case, and you know what I mean? The, the big thing about it is, is that if nobody loses in the first two rounds of the playoffs and we beat Leo tomorrow, <laughs> we're we're Catholic League champs. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And it's easy as that. So, you know what I mean? We're always looking for the competition, but at the same token, you know what I mean? If, if, if the way we've been going, if we keep going the way we're going, you know what I mean? We might have seven, you know what I mean? Seven out of the eight classes win a state championship, and, and that could be huge. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all. I, actually, I remember going back a few – don't remember the exact year, uh, but I'm from Batavia. And, yeah. You know, they had a team that, of course, you know, went 9-0 and or 8-1. and They were playing a low-seeded Mount Carmel team that yeah. snuck in at 5-4. and four. Mount Carmel <laughs> crushed them. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's what you talk about. The competition, the CCL, you know, they go out and play the suburban schools. Yeah. They really can do some damage in the and playoffs. So, we can have, we can have a state champ in every but one and three. We really can have a state champ in besides one and three because we have it two way. We have Hope and Aurora. Um, for a we have, uh, mm, I know we have a four A team. Five A um, we have. Uh, oh, I can't. Ignatius is in five A. Saint Lawrence is in six A. Mount Carmel and Providence are in seven A. St. Rita's in 80, you know what I mean? So we realistically can have six state champions plus to prep bowl. How more dominant can you be? I don't, you, can you tell me any other conference that, can, <laughs> that has that kind of numbers from two-way to 80 that can at any given time win a, win a state championship? Definitely not in the state of Illinois. Yeah. And, and especially to have that uh, depth in different classes as well, to go all the way from – 2A up to 8A, yeah. have all those, you know, you have some conferences like the DVC that are going to have, you know, all the high-class teams, yeah. but this is really depth in having small and large schools that can play at a really high level. Exactly, you know what I mean, and I, I think that's what separates the CCL from every other conference in the state of Illinois, because we do have that. Oh, Marmion at 4A. They're in 6A. Oh, they did yeah. they did they get the, the 6A. Okay. I believe they're in 6A, yeah, they always get that double oh, the all okay, boys the, thing. Yeah, the, yeah. the multiplier. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? I, but it was just funny because I was just looking through the brackets the other day and I'm just looking at it and I'm like, are you kidding me? We can have a state champion <laughs> in six of the eight classes and then we could have a prep bowl championship? It's just it's just amazing to me as a coach because you just look at it, you're just like, man, are we stacked up and down this conference? Yeah. Like, and that has to help you out in, in getting players to come here, a chance to play in the best conference in the state of Illinois. And you want to talk about what gets you noticed by college coaches, it's playing in the Chicago Catholic League. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? And, and that's my th- big thing is that my, my phone rings off the hook all the time because I keep getting coaches. They're like, who do you got for me, coach? Who do you got for me this year, coach? Who do you got for me this year? And, you know what I mean? It helps out that I got Zach and Shamar. I can be like, hey, I got Shaq and, uh, Zach and Shamar. Which one do you want? You know what I mean? <laughs> Which one do you want? And uh, I, I could see both of them having a big impact uh, at the college level. Uh, but, Coach, going back to Leo, it, it was a close 27-21 loss. You guys came back near the end of the game. What do you feel like your team learned from that game? Their speed. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing that – we were underestimating was their speed because at the time we played them, they didn't look that fast on film. So now we know and we know what to expect from them now. And I think that's going to be that play a big, big role for us uh, tomorrow night. Well, do you expect a different approach from Leo at all because it is the prep bowl playoffs now or just kind of no, similar to everything? No, they're going to pl- they played their game. They, and, you know, what I mean, Leo's been around for 90 years. You know what I mean? Maybe even a hundred years. They're gonna play their game. They they know what they they know what they're good at. They know what they're bad at. We just have to exploit the stuff that they're bad at, and we just have to be really really better than them at the stuff that they're good at. You know what I mean? So, well, coach, we saw in the regular season game that this rivalry can get a little bit emotional. What is your message to the team uh, to avoid any of those issues tomorrow night? You know what? I'd even address it because it was just. It, it's a it's a it, it wasn't a big incident so i'd even address it they it, it was in one ear out the other you know what i mean um hopefully they do have a chip on their shoulder going in there tomorrow to make sure that we know we are the better team though so we'll look to show it tomorrow night as always we'd like to remind you tonight's show and all saint joseph chargers programming is presented by meatheads in elmhurst a place you can enjoy with your whole family from the moment you walk in the door until the moment you leave meatheads at 143 north york street 
in Elmhurst. Coach, uh, a unique situation having to play a team uh, for the second time in a season and, and the second time in three weeks, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you approach that having to face them uh, a second time so recently? Uh, it, the way we're facing the way we're looking at it, it's just payback for that first game. It really is. At the end of the day, that's what this is all about. It's about payback. We know we were the better team. Their coaches knew they, we were the better team. They even came up to us after the game and said, we got lucky. So we're going to hope that they're not going to get lucky again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, in the regular season game, and you mentioned uh, maybe not being as ready as you'd like for their speed, and Keyshawn Douglas was a guy who really hurt uh, you guys in that game with a uh, kickoff return and also a long reception for a touchdown. Is there going to be an increased focus on him tomorrow night? No, we – that's one thing I can tell you that Brown doesn't do. He doesn't focus on one person because it doesn't take one person to beat us. It takes 11. So, And that's the biggest thing that he's been telling the kids all year is that it takes 11 people to beat us. The one kid could have a, a good game, but it takes 11 to beat us. So, Definitely. And uh, you guys did have all the momentum at the end of that game, though. Coming back, it was 27-6. to six. You made it 27-21 final. Do you see that carrying over at all into this game, or do you think it doesn't really matter at all? It don't matter. It (laughs) it don't matter. It was a game we played. We lost. We went to the next week. We played a game. We lost. We got into this week now. We know what to expect. We just we're just out here to win the football game now. So, Coach Caleb sat out last week against Aurora Christian. Is he healthy, or will it be Ezekiel Boos tomorrow night? Actually, I'm gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna come on here, Caleb, real quick. So that way you can ask him yourself. So <laughs> hang on All one right. second. Caleb. <laughs> so we're going to have Caleb Hayden on here. Hey, Caleb, how you doing? Good. Are you healthy? Yes, I am. You're playing tomorrow night? Yes. You excited about it? Yes. All right. Well. That's about all I needed to know uh, from Cale Hayden. Good luck tomorrow night. All right, right. <laughs> I love putting Caleb on the spot. That's why I did that. <laughs> well, Coach, I remember back in the first show, uh, you know, I asked him a few questions. He's a little bit more of a quiet guy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and that's the thing, like um, – I, I like getting all the, the guys here, recognition, everything like that. And, you know what I mean, going forward, I, I think that's something we really have to incorporate in this because I think getting them out there and getting them to understand what's going on and that this is what we need to do and things like that. And I, I think it, it's great that, you know what I mean, we're doing this. And I, I, I loved it. They The kids loved it because they got to see you every week and everything like that. And we know what, we're, what we have to do and, I, I think it's great right now. So Well, I've really enjoyed it as well so far this year and hoping for a couple more weeks of yeah, it as well. So am I. So, uh, am I. so, you know, definitely, of course, you guys wanted to be in the IHSA playoffs, uh, but we talked about it a little bit earlier. What does it mean to be playing in the postseason for the second consecutive year? Uh, I, I think it's huge. Um, I, I really do because I think it shows that what the determination the and everything like that and Actually, you know what? I'm going to call Shamar over here because he can answer a little bit better than I can. And then go and call Zach over here, too. So hang on one second. Shamar. Shamar. Zach. Zach. We're going to have uh, Shamar McDade Bishop come on quickly and then uh, Zach Ford in a little bit. Uh, Shamar, congratulations on being named uh, Conference Player of the Year and also uh, three-time All-CCL. That's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. Uh, and Shamar, a coach was talking about how excited you guys are to play in this prep bowl. It's the first time for St. Joe's in the prep bowl. What's the attitude of the team been like this week? Uh, it's just been, you know, have fun, you know, uh, go out and play just like it was a state playoffs. Absolutely, and you guys get another chance at Leo, a game you guys feel like you could have won. Uh, how do you guys feel to get that chance at your rival again? Oh, man, it's, it feels good because, you know, that, that game was, you know, kind of a fluke to us. So, you know, we want to come back and show them what it really is. 
And, Shamar, you've been making huge plays all season at linebacker, defensive end, offensive line. You know, what's going to be your mentality tomorrow night? What are your goals for tomorrow night's game? Uh, just go out and play my best. Um, whatever position I'm at, just take it full ride, full stride. And I'm sure you will. You've been doing it all season. Shamar, thank you for coming on once again. You've been a great guest all season. Uh, thank you. All right, next up, uh, we're going to have Zach Ford on here. <laughs> and uh, Zach, uh, you know, I asked Shamar the same thing. How excited are you guys to get a chance to play in the prep bowl? Oh, I'm excited. It's, it's something that, uh, other than the state playoffs, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've seen, I've seen the game in the past, and it's, it's amazing to finally be able to start playing in them. Yeah, it's the first time in St. Joe's history they've been in the prep bowl. And, you know, you guys didn't make the IHSA playoffs, but two straight years of postseason football, what does that mean for this program? It means, like, to me, it's just a big turn from when it once started where that wasn't even possible. But now, seeing it two years in a row, it's it's changed a lot. And, Zach, a, a second chance at Leo. They're your rival. Does that get you even more pumped up for this game, knowing that it's them? For me, that's that's what I wanted. I wanted to face them just so we can get them out the way and finally – Finally, just keep it going and beat Leo. Yeah, and a chance to play uh, at St. Rita, a really nice facility downtown. Does does that add anything to this game as well? For me, for me, it does. For because uh, we played St. Rita too, so just still being able to go back to that field still holds some memories. Yeah, and a chance to get a win there tomorrow night. And, and Zach, you're a senior, so what are you telling the younger players to try to get them to this win tomorrow night? just when do your job when called upon it's varsity that's it's something bigger but it shouldn't scare you to go and play it you should want to do you should want to help varsity out no matter what no matter what it is and i'm sure they will zach thank you so much for coming on you've been a great guest all season i told coach petroski i hope we're going to keep it going a few more weeks here thank you you're welcome Coach, uh, thanks for having those guys on. It's it's always great, as you said, to have these players come on. Uh, it, it's really, you know, all of you guys have been, have been really tremendous all season to talk to. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and like I've seen a little bit earlier, I, I appreciate everything you guys have done, um, especially getting us that extra exposure that we really need. Um, now with the archives, we can go back and show kids that we were on, we were live on the radio and things like that. And this is big for them not only for us as a program but for the kids and the incoming kids because they got the opportunity to do things that they've never done before and I, I think that's going to be huge absolutely and and the momentum's just going to keep going keep that train going yeah, as you said exactly that's you know i mean that's the best catchphrase i could have come up with this year and it, it's it truly truly means what we need to do is we need to keep this train going because um with this freshman and sophomore class we're pretty good so you know what i mean if, if we just keep focus and keep our eye on the prize nothing's really going to stop us and hopefully nothing will stop you tomorrow night against leo coach any final thoughts before we go <sighs> it, it's kind of funny i had a dream last night and uh i i never have dreams of us winning or losing or anything like that but i literally had a dream that we won 45 to nothing i don't know how i don't know why it, how 45 points even came up in my head i have no clue you know what i mean and hopefully leo ain't listening to this so make it <laughs> <laughs> bulletin board stuff right now but you know what i mean i just think our mental focus is just where it needs to be to get and i i don't think i don't think they could stop us i i think that's i think that's my mentality and i think that was what i was thinking about last night that they're not going to stop us so well, hopefully that'll be the case tomorrow yeah. night, and it'll be right here on Arena Sportsnet Chicago. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Rich Petrosky Show. St. Joseph football coverage will continue tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, from St. Rita as the Chargers take on Leo in the first round of the prep bowl. For Coach Petrosky, I'm Connor Klingen saying so long from St. Joseph High School, and have a great night. <laughs>